Howdy, everybody. It's week two. Mr. Scampers already up in my business here. How you doing, Mr. Scampers? Uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. The regular Wednesday night thing we'll do. Again, I'm going to warn you all, we're morphing this into a real thing here. Uh, and uh, But ramping it up takes a little time, a little energy. And who has time? I have a little bit of energy. Uh, but we're working our way up there uh, with our friend Pedro Resto, who maybe will be in this chat tonight. And got some things up our sleeve uh, going forward. And so in the meantime, we're going to answer some questions and help everybody dial back. It was, you know, week one, the panic, the, the shock, the dismay, the horror. And uh, hey, thanks for coming back, Corey. Hey, Buckeye Lots and Cars. Uh, Robert, Buckeye Lots and Cars. Uh, worry about Brady versus so We'll get to the questions here in a minute. Let me set the table, everybody. I'm Bob Harris, senior editor of footballdiehards.com. In case you're new to this thing, I just like to sit around, chat, answer your questions, help you figure things out, get a little idea of what uh, what direction you want to go. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what I'd do and what my opinions are. And you can use those as you form your own opinions. And I've been doing this a long time, been playing the game and covering the fantasy football world for like 30 years. So you can hear me every uh, almost every damn day, except today and Tuesday. Uh, Monday, Thursday, Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, 10 p.m. till 1 a.m. Friday, 10 p.m. till midnight. Saturday, you can hear us on NFL, Sirius XM NFL Radio, and the Fantasy Channel uh, from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Sunday, you can hear me on the Sirius XM pregame show from 11 to 1 with Jeff Manns. It's a good time always. And uh, check out footballdiehards.com. It's a website. You'll find the Flash Update, our in-season premium product up and running for this week. Lots of tools, lots of information, lots of rankings, all the things you need to get things off to a good start. And uh, and this is part of that. So <clears throat> we'll get rolling here. Just wanted to give people a chance to show up uh, as we do. If you like this thing, hit the like button. If you cannot stand me, you hit the dislike button. Do it and then undo it and then do it again if it makes you feel better. Hit the subscribe button as well. We do a lot of videos. I'm here every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Again, it's just kind of a Q&A right now, but we're going to morph into some more things with bigger guests and more fun. You can catch me on Saturday at noon Eastern time for a Ask Me Anything session as well. That will remain the same. Uh, Saturday night, our DFS lineup show with Eric Romoff and Jamie Calandro is on 9 p.m. Eastern, so you want to check that out. Uh, so lots of good stuff. And also Evan Tarciano, uh, the Roto underscore wizard on Twitter, uh, will be doing his waiver wire wizard. Uh, he does a full article. He'll be doing a video version of that as well. So, And also on Friday, Saturday, you can catch my injury videos. So lots going on. I see the questions coming, everybody. Uh, in case you haven't been following along, you're just diving into things. Dak Prescott, he's hurt. Not going to play. Bad news. Cooper Rush, going to play. I don't know anything. Do, do we like anything in this offense? Anything at all? <clears throat> offensive line issues for the Cowboys, the Packers, the Buccaneers, the Raiders, a little bit for the Bears. Um, those are issues. Elijah Mitchell missed like up to eight weeks with a knee injury. So Jeff Wilson Jr., next man up, but they're going to let Tyrion Davis-Price and Jordan Mason battle it out. They added Marlon Mack to the practice squad. George Kittle still a little beat up. Keenan Allen in Thursday night football will not be playing. He has been ruled out. Harrison Bucker ruled out for the Kansas City Chiefs in that game. Looking for a big shootout, right? Would love to see it. Uh, Matt Amendola. That's the answer to the question you're about to ask me. Is like, who's filling in for Harrison Bucker? That's who. Uh, DeAndre Swift showed up on the injury report today. What the hell is going on here, everybody? He had a great game against the uh, Eagles in a losing effort. So did A.J. Brown in a winning effort, by the way. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, you know, the Buccaneers have a huge injury report. It seems like Chris Godwin is the one to worry about there for the uh, – Saints have a pretty big injury report as well. You'll want to watch that. Alvin Kamara limited a little bit by his hamstring or by rib injury. Uh, last week, not a big workload. It turns out Mark Ingram's a little beat up. Jameis Winston has a back issue as well, so he's limited in practice today. The good news, because I come bearing good news. It's always my goal here. Uh, J.K. Dobbins practicing fully today and recording to Jeff Zerbiak from The Athletic looking pretty good. So I see the questions rolling in. Everyone's had a chance to show up. Let's do this. Starting at the top. Worried about Brady versus the Saints. Any university would start Matt Ryan this week, six point TD. There is a universe I would do this. <clears throat> like it's not my desired outcome, but when you think about it, you, you mentioned the history against the Saints is not good. I don't think he's beaten the Saints since he's been a Buccaneer. Um, and, and so there's that, but there's also the supporting cast in the offensive line. I mentioned it, Donovan Smith, the starting right tackle. You saw when he went down, things got ugly. They're already a little bit ailing up the middle of that defense, that offensive line. Um, but to their credit, I thought they did a pretty good job in that regard. Tristan Wirfs also a little beat up the left tackle. So I think he'll play. 
But Donovan Smith is totally a, you know, kind of a pain management thing. He had a dislocated elbow, apparently. Also, the rest of the supporting cast, Chris Godwin, I don't know, no chance he plays. Well, minor chance, small chance he plays, narrow band, tiny chance he plays, but don't expect him to play. Uh, Mike Evans has a calf issue. He was limited today. Leonard Fournette, so I'm glad grab his hamstring at the end of, the, of his last run. He might not be, well, he'll probably be ready to go, but maybe not full speed. Uh, Julio Jones, limited today. Russell Gage, limited today. Tight ends, limited by not being Gronk. So a, not, a lot not to like. So uh, like, I'm not eagerly making this swap out. I'll see how it plays out. Um, but again, it's, you know, it's not like the most insane thing in the world if you have that hunch. Also, we'll watch Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, he's dealing with a quad injury, so that may be a factor. Alec Pierce, not much of a factor, was he? I mean, really, it's like almost a one-man receiving core. Maybe Mo Alec Cox part of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think Matt Ryan is a guy you could play in case of an emergency. I don't know that just because you're playing the Bucks is an, or the Saints is an emergency for Tom Brady. But if he's lacking a lot of his weapons and that offensive line isn't together, it's not reasonable. Uh, again, thanks for coming back, Corey. I appreciate that. Thomas E., would you start Jeff Wilson Jr. or Travis Etienne? I might. I, I would consider Jeff Wilson Jr. Look, you, you you're expecting him to go in as the default uh, lead back in a heavy, run heavy offense, right? Uh, it's at home against Seattle. We saw some success on the ground, or at least the running backs had some success uh, in Javante Williams, who needed more work. Melvin Gordon, if they hadn't had some fumbles, maybe they would have had huge games. So, so yeah, I would start. I would I would consider it. Like Travis Etienne had a couple bad plays. If he they'd gone another way, if like one of you know, Trevor Lawrence. When I watched that game, I'm going to admit that, man, he looks horrible. Travis Etienne looks horrible. Well, that was the red zone version of that. Turns out he looked horrible on a couple plays. In general, in those two plays, and maybe if they had been better passes, uh, they would have been better outcomes. So maybe some of that was on Trevor Lawrence. I do think he'll get a solid workload, but to me right now, Jeff Wilson Jr. has a clear path to workload. I'm probably playing him over Travis Etienne. By the way, how about James Robinson? Just a reminder, everybody, you know, we want to project like nobody can never, you know, play after an Achilles injury. Well, that's been the case, uh, but we kept hearing all offseason long that it was different for Robinson, that he looked really good. Then we heard that he wasn't on the pup list to, you know, start training camp. Then we heard he was working in practice. Then we heard he was cleared to play, and then he practiced all last week. Turns out he looks pretty good. So just because one thing is true or something is true in one case, you know, every case is different, right? Uh, and so just be mindful of that and pay attention to what the reporting is for right now. Um, so yes, I would start Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, over Travis Etienne in this particular instance. And, you know, look at the Colts, maybe they'll get Shaquille Leonard back. I don't know. Uh, saw the initial injury report, didn't give much clarity. Um, but, but also one thing about the Jaguars, I don't think the Colts have won in Jacksonville for how long now? It's been like since 2015 or something ridiculous like that. So there's that. Mr. Scamper's worried about the Najee nonsense. It scares the heck out of him. Combine that with the anemic offense. Agree. Scares the heck out of me, too. Also, the production we saw last week scares the heck out of me. Um, yeah, that's a bit of an issue, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a concern for me. Uh, he did practice on a limited basis today. So, I mean, I'm, I think he's going to play, but that's something to watch. But I'm kind of with you on this one. I might, be, I might be dialed back a little bit. Let me just look. The numbers were horrible. Just in general, the numbers were horrible. Except for Deion, Deion, like Pat Fryermuth and Deontay Johnson, man, were locked in. Looked fantastic, right? Uh, and the target share for Deontay Johnson was everything you want to see. The catches were everything you want to see. This was maybe the concern, right, for if you were drafting Najee Harris, was that offensive line was going to be an issue. And it was an issue. Offensive line is going to be a theme here, people. And maybe it's just, a, you know, because we're early in the year. Patriots can play a little bit of defense. I mean, I'm probably still playing Najee unless I have a super good alternative. Um, but man, I, I don't feel I don't feel good about it either, Mr. Stampers. I don't blame you. You're not wrong, sir. Quick question from Cade. How do I feel about trading away AJ Brown for Kyler Murray and Darnell Mooney? I have Trevor Lawrence for my receivers. I have Jamar Chase, Cortland Sutton, and DK Metcalf. You have the receivers to do it. I'd ask for more. And AJ Brown is coming off a huge game. Ask for more. Um, and see what happens, right? And honestly, I I might want to trade some of those other pieces like Cortland Sutton or DK Metcalf. I, I might want to give it a week and let it breathe and see if one of those players has a good game. DK Metcalf, you know, seven targets, caught them all, just didn't do a lot with them. I just, 
man, I'm not wanting to get rid of Brown. I'm not wanting to play Trevor Lawrence necessarily either. And uh, Kyler Murray would be a, certainly be an upgrade. Um, and Darnell Mooney, you know, I think last week was an aberration. The weather was horrible and there's still some offense cobbled together, but, but yeah, I'm probably going to be reluctant to do that. I, Kate, if I'm being honest, I'd probably wait and see if I couldn't get a good game out of, you know, Cortland Sutton or Metcalf and, and then see what I'm going to do and try and ride with Lawrence. But I, I don't disagree either with you that to Lawrence did not look good last week. Need to see some progress from him. Uh, Kevin, oh, where was I? Kevin O'Brien. Oh, no, I missed one. I missed one. I missed one. Kevin Conley. FFPC League, how much fab money would you spend on Curtis Samuel? A fair amount. Look, this looks like the, so you know one thing that goes cor- kind of corresponds with his you know with his good game. We know that they've wanted to use him all along, right? Health has been an issue. Health is not an issue right now. The interesting thing though was the lack of usage for JD McKissick, and I think maybe a lot of that workload that we saw McKissick get is going to go to Curtis Samuel. Um, I wouldn't overdo it. Um, So I tend to dial back early in, in free agency, but I would want a piece of Curtis Samuel. Um, you know, I may be try 10, 25, 10 to 20%. I don't know if I want to go as high as 25. I know. So my co-host on Sirius is really like all gung ho about going early. If a player you like, I don't know that he's going to be a superstar for your team or he's going to fuel everything or he's going to score two touchdowns every week. I think he's going to have a role and I think he's a unique gadget player. So don't overdo it, but do, Put a serious effort into it. Corey Bishop. Hunt, Judy, Cooks, Gordon need two standard with a 100-yard bonus. In a standard league, ah, boy, can you count on that Kareem Hunt touchdowns every week? I don't think you can, um, but I would probably like him and Cooks for me. Uh, Judy looked damn good, but that, those are my two. Kevin O'Brien, need help with in week two, full PPR. Need best three of these six flex options. Curtis Samuel, Sterling Shepard, Adam Thielen, Bateman, James Robinson, ETN. I'll probably pick one of those backs. I'm probably playing Robinson in this game. Um, I probably I probably play. Oh man, I think you know I'm going to play Thielen. I'm going to play the good offense and get a piece of that. And then it's between Samuel and Bateman. And I'll probably play Samuel in this case and wait to see. New Orleans did sign. They signed with the practice squad, Mr. Scampers, uh, the last I saw. But that is a concern with both Kamara and Ingram Ailing. So that's something to watch for sure the next few days. Robert says, half-point PPR. My running backs are CMC, Chuba, Henderson for starters. Oh, Chubb. Ugh. Henderson for starters. Bench, Pierce, and Deontay Foreman for handcuffs. Couldn't get Wilson. I picked up Davis Price and cut James Cook. You agree with that move? So I think James James Cook over time is going to be fine. I just think, you know, there's clearly a large fly in the ointment and his name is Zach Moss, and that's going to be a limiting factor along with the touchdown uh, or the fumble, I'm sorry, um, that he had in that against the Rams. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm reluctant to drop a guy with that kind of talent that they seem to have a specific role for, but at this point it's not working out. Uh, and you know, for Davis price, I mean, I don't know what you're going to get. He's going to compete. He was not active for the first game, right? And that may have had more to do with special teams because Jordan Mason returns kicks or is playing special teams. And so maybe that's, you know, a bigger factor in why, you know, with everyone else was healthy, that Davis price was out. So what they're saying is he's going to compete for the number two role. So James Cook seemed to have a role, but that seems to be diminishing. So it's probably an even trade. How much fab budget would you invest in trying to get uh, Jeff Wilson or DuVernay? Uh, $50 yearly budget. I've got CMC, Jamal Williams, Aaron Jones, Henderson, and R. Stevenson. So I wouldn't go overboard on either of them. Uh, you know, I mean, you're pretty good at running back. Uh, and DuVernay, I think, so, you know, we'll see how this plays out. To me, it looks like there's going to be a flavor of the week not named at Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. I mean, I think those guys are going to be the consistently targeted players in that offense, and then there's going to be somebody who rises up every other week. Maybe it's Duvernay. Maybe he turns into more of a thing. But until I see him be more of a thing, maybe one next week it's Isaiah Likely gets, you know, that run. Maybe it's James Prochet. Maybe it's Demarcus Robinson one week. It just seems like uh, this offense historically has gone through the tight end of the wide receiver one, and then if somebody else shines, it's a temporary condition. So – I probably wouldn't go overboard on either of those guys. Um, I mean, you've got plenty of plenty of depth at running back, right? So, um, 
you know, not all of them starters with clear paths to workload. Like Wilson's going to have probably for eight weeks, assuming he stays healthy. So I'd probably go like, again, I'm, I kind of go light, uh, you know, so I'm not sure. I, I you know, I, I try to, so I'm, and you could guys can tell me what kind of player you are guys and gals. Um, I tend to hold money back for later in the season, right? My co-host on Sirius, Mike Dempsey, is just the opposite. He'll spend everything on a guy right at the beginning. So some of this depends on you. I'd be I'd be kind of cautious because that's my nature. Spending, I wouldn't probably spend more than, uh, you know, more than $10. And you probably won't get them if that's the case. So if you want them, you're going to have to pay up. And I'd say go at least half and maybe more if you want to get them. And then that'd be Wilson and more than DuVernay. There's a lot of players not practicing today. Uh, Patricia Betterline, Damian Pierce, amazingly on the wire. Would you need to drop Ramondre Stevenson or Khalil Herbert? Both are on my bench. So I've not been a huge Damian Pierce guy. Uh, you know, I thought at the very least he would give you a clear path to workload and a crappy offense. Remember, they only ran for like 3.4 yards a carry last year. Um, and I didn't see major upgrades on the offensive line. Maybe Pierce turns out to be more of a playmaker right now. It doesn't seem like they trust him. Uh, to be an every down guy, Rex Burkhead, the veteran, uh, knows how to do a lot of things and they seem to be leaning on him. Maybe that changes in short order. I, you know, like, so, I mean, we've seen Ty Montgomery's out for New England and maybe that clears up some room for Ramondre Stevenson, who to me, I like Damian Harris better, not because I like his name, but because I like him more as the lead guy, but he's, you know, but, but we saw Dame Ramon Ray Stevenson show some upside and some explosiveness and maybe a little bit of wiggle as a receiver. So, and Khalil Herbert seems like a guy that's maybe on the, the rise at some point. Uh, I would, I'm greedy. I would try to drop, drop somebody else, Patricia, maybe somebody at my onesie positions, if you have more than one kicker or more than one tight end and kind of cobble that together like that. Um, if you made me drop one of those guys, it would be Herbert uh, and I wouldn't feel great about it. I, too, Mr. Scampers, am happy for James Robinson. This is funny because we started hearing, you know, first of all, Dempsey, the co-host on Sirius, his headquarters are the Jacksonville Stadium. He works for a local Jacksonville radio station. But talking to every single beat writer, and I was on a, a Twitter space, yes, last, I want to say a week ago, with the 32-bit crew, at 30, number two, written out, bit. Um, and uh, John Shipley from SI was on, and and he kind of encapsulated what I'd heard all offseason was just they he's kind of a different kind of guy, and this has been the direction it'd been going all along. So, so there you have it. I'm happy for him, and it's uh, glad to see someone do it. Yeah, I'm with you, John Bonneville. I don't want to drop anyone else, uh, but it, exactly. I took a long time to say what you said in like a half a sentence. Maybe you should be doing this. Joe, Her <laughs> Joe Hebert, is it too early for Eddie trending? On yeah, he's trending positive, I would say. He has the concussion in the protocol, but he was limited today. So I think it's in a good good line. Uh, also, what do I think of the Bengals' D versus Dallas? I think, you know, that offensive line's a mess right now. Tyler Smith, to his credit, did a great job, right? I thought that was, like, to me, a little bit surprising how solid he was. But the rest of it's a little bit of a mess. I'm a little worried about this one, especially with Dak out. So. Uh, I do like the Bengals D. If you want to play one, uh, that's the two things I want to look at. A core, I want to target a quarterback, and uh, if the offensive line isn't great. So it checks those two boxes. Corey Bishop, with a tight end landscape, I picked up Taysom Hill and my crazy thoughts. Not crazy. I don't, I don't know if you're going to get that kind of run every week, but I do think, you know, you're going to get some points out of him every week, you know, w whether it's minimal. He won't be the receiving guy. It sounds like Juwan Johnson is the guy that's kind of rising up to be the – top option is a receiving threat but when you have a guy who's going to be lining up a quarterback running the ball doing weird stuff there will be goal line packages i think if i was in a bind in an emergency i have him in a league uh where i think he's still listed as tight end um I'll, no i guess he's listed as quarterback it's a two quarterback league so but i you know it's a nice emergency plan lazard easily over gauge in a half point ppr correct yes assuming he plays and i think he will play he's back on the practice field today by the way both david bakhtiari and elton jenkins are back on the practice field to limited basis they really need some help on the offensive line there would be great and also at wide receiver hi jimmy williams you have spoke on the wide receiver rotation and possible protection and with the la wide receivers this week love to hear your take on that situation I think it's dicey, right? We saw last, you know, last week nobody got more than four targets there. Even even after Keenan Allen went out, and, you know, Mike Williams, it was a horrible game. Two catches, ten yards. Nobody had more than four targets, 
And that includes DeAndre Carter, who was kind of the surprise guy. Thought they picked him up as a kick returner. Uh, our guy, Josh Palmer, everyone's favorite from the summer. You know, if you, if you made me like divine in advance, you know, it's hard to do it based on last week's numbers. Cause again, nobody got more than four targets. Uh, I would probably still go with Mike Williams, Palmer, Gerald Everett's a great play, but not a wide receiver, obviously. Then after that, I think you're kind of taking your chances with your, with, with Carter or, you know, or uh, Jalen Guyton, uh, however deep you want to go, but it is going to be a shootout. And if you're taking chances on any of those guys, uh, I don't think you're totally insane. I just feel like I'd want to play the, the most likely outcome is Mike Williams has a much better game than he did last week. Robert wants to know. Got Samuel after waivers finished, gave up Nico Collins. What do you think? No fab spent. I think that's a wise choice. Look, I mean, Houston's offense, I expect them to be better over the course of time. I expect Davis Mills to continue to pro progress. But Brandon Cooks is the primary weapon there, and I don't think that changes. And Nico Collins will make some plays. Uh, but I think Samuels, there's, I mean, th there's a reason they paid him. They wanted to bring him in, they, and they knew him of course, from their time in Carolina, the coaching staff by that, by them, I mean, Ron Rivera and Scott Turner, the offensive coordinator, they knew what they wanted to do with them. So, you know, expecting them to do those things now that he's healthy seems totally reasonable. So I'm with you there. John Bonneville again, people dropping cook after week one boggles my mind. If you're drafting him for a late October, November, not September, he's a mini Dalvin. If he can just hold on the ball. That's the thing. I mean, to me, the concern early is the flying the ointment. I'm not dropping them. I think this is a long, you know, you didn't invest in them. To, you know, you, well, you shouldn't invest it in them expecting immediate high-end production, right? Devin Singletary is still there. He's going to be the primary guy no matter what. Zach Moss has just kind of become the guy that is causing us problems. And, and I don't know how much that changes or when it changes, but I do think Cook is going to come on. They drafted him exactly to be what he is. And uh, they'll, they'll end up using him, I'll say. I'm with you, John. Kevin O'Brien, best wide receiver this week. Terry McLaurin, Juju, or DJ Moore? Well, I'm expecting DJ Moore to get a course correction in usage, um, but I'd probably go McLaurin over those other two right now. And I know it wasn't a great game last week. He did have the big touchdown, though, so that helps. And there are some other mouths to feed there. Look, Antonio Gibson looks like he's going to be a factor. Jahan Dotson's a real thing, so I do like that. But in Carolina, so is Robbie Anderson going to have a chance, and I don't know if anybody beyond that uh, – so that's going to be, you know, that'd be the direction I go. McLaurin, kind of in the order. Look, Juju is going to be heavily targeted, and I don't think there's anything wrong with going for him in a PPR. I think he gives you a high floor. I think DJ Moore will too, but I'm going to go McLaurin, Moore, and Juju for me. Scampers, half point PPR. Daryl Henderson or A Rob versus Atlanta. Gabe Davis for, I'm going to go Daryl Henderson. I mean, you, you think there's going to be a course correction coming for A Rob. I mean, unless he is truly horrible. I don't know. Is he his last year's? Allen Robinson, the new Allen Robinson, is that what we're going to see? My best guess is no. But some of the answers they were giving us, you know, like, oh, there was zone covers. Like, you've never seen zone coverage? You don't know how to defeat that? Pass protection is a big deal for Atlanta. It's a problem. That's my bigger concern there. That's why I'm going with Henderson. Uh Oh, Daryl Henderson or a uh, Rob or Gabe Davis versus Tennessee. I'm going Daryl Henderson over either of those other two, and it'd be Gabe Davis over a Rob. I can read. Do you do the matchup notes as well as the team notes at Football Diehards? Those are look great in a lot of info. No, those come directly from the NFL, and uh, they do good work on that. Best running back two this week, Gordon Sanders Robinson. Boy, Miles Sanders looked good. He got some work at the goal line. I thought that was pretty impressive. Um. I still want to play that. I'm going to check some things before I answer this blindly. Hmm. I'm going to find some information. Yeah, I think I think I'm playing. I think I'm going to play Sanders in this case. Uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, and like Melvin Gordon, I mean, I think, you know, at some point they're going to come to, I think we all think that, like, maybe we're just projecting, uh, as fantasy managers, we want to see Javante Williams get the full workload. Um, I think Melvin Gordon's still going to have a role. He's more of a flex worthy play to me. I'd say Sanders. And so is Robinson splitting time. I'm going to go with Sanders. We'll see if Kenny Gainwell can limit him at some point, but I was very encouraged that he got the goal line work. David Patrick, I've gauge and contemplated holding him, but 
Robbie Anderson, Jarvis Landry, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Kyle Phillips, Sterling Shepard, Corey Davis, Ron the Wire. I probably want almost all those guys more than I'd want Gage right now. And that's not to say that Gage isn't going to have some value at some point. It just seems to be he's not very high in the pecking order. Maybe he will be this week if there are injuries. Um, but if you're asking me to put those in priority, I don't know if Donovan Peoples-Jones, that 11 target game or whatever was sustainable. Uh, and we heard all the reporting was he had the chemistry with uh, Deshaun Watson this summer, not with Jacoby Brissett, but turns out he does. I think Kyle Phillips is a hell of a player. Sterling Shepard, clear cut wide receiver one uh, for the Giants. Corey Davis, you know, a top two and a not great offense. I, it'd probably be between Landry. I'd probably go Landry, then Anderson, then Phillip, then, then Shepard, then Phillips, uh, then Davis. I like Phillips an awful lot. I think he's the one piece that's missing in that Tennessee offense, and it's gone back all summer long. So that's a little bit of a play. Are these, uh, David Patrick, I don't know if they, did, that any of these guys are going to be your starter for you on a regular basis, right? And maybe that's kind of how you play it out. Look at your starters and what's the piece that you don't have, right? Is it a big field stretching player? Then maybe you go with an Anderson or a D, Donovan People Jones. You just need a guy that gives you a solid floor, then maybe a Landry or a Shepard. Beach Digger, I know you need to already saw the field much, but just in case, who would you pick up a CMC's handcuff? I'd pick up Foreman, but, you know, I think it's not going to be the same workload. This is not going to be a plug-and-play situation like we would expect from Madison, you know, in Minnesota or some of the other traditional handcuffs. Um, I think this would be one where they chop it up a little bit and both of them will play roles. Somebody spent $42 on Taysom Hill in my league. That's crazy. That stat line is not sustainable. What he is is like a total emergency play. Break glass and click case up, right? He's going to have games where he gets you that. I think, what, he was on the field for 17 snaps. They're going to use him. And like I said, maybe you get lucky and you catch him in some kind of package where he runs in a touchdown, takes a snap, runs in a touchdown or something. But that's what you're banking on with him. So totally an emergency play. Spending that much money on him is nuts. Hi, Scott Hedge. Love the format and the opportunity to listen to your expertise and ask you your feedback. Well, give me a question, Scott Hedge. Thank you for the kind words. By the way, you can like this video. It helps us out. You can subscribe to the channel. I'm here every Wednesday. It's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm here every Saturday. It's going to be noon p.m. Eastern. Is that even a thing? Noon p.m.? Noon Eastern. Uh, our DFS lineup show with Jamie Calandro and Eric Romoff will be 9 p.m. at night. We'll have our weekly video up on the YouTube channel. I don't know if it's going to be live, but it'll be Evan Tarsiano doing his waiver wire wizard on Tuesday. I'll be doing my injury update. You can find all this at footballdiehards.com, by the way, if you want to subscribe to the site and get our premium content, which is very good, I'd like to think. I've been doing it a long time. Um, go ahead and use the promo code DIEHARDS to get a 15% discount. I think you'll like it. All right. Do I like Samuel over Dubs or Wilson the Jets? Yes, at the moment. I already have McLaurin, you know, Probably like him over Dubs for sure, and probably Wilson. Wilson was targeted more than I thought, but I just you know don't have a real good feeling about that offense just yet. Uh, do I have shares of Damian Pierce? Yes, I do have shares of Damian Pierce, but I didn't play him. League playing DFS after hearing your thoughts on James Cook, should I go back to him and drop Davis Price? I kind of so like you know Davis Price is kind of like a lottery ticket to me, right? Or like a you know you're just sitting there holding on to him in case something happens, and we know how it goes in San Francisco or in Kyle Shanahan offenses. Anyone can rise up. Right? And I'm not putting too much on the facts. As I said, I don't think the fact that he was inactive against the Bears is maybe a reflection on him as much as maybe he's not on special teams and maybe Jordan Mason is. So that was probably an issue. And But the talk is he's going to compete for a backup role to Jeff Wilson. Well, James Cook has a role. It's just going to take a little time to develop, and maybe he has to sit back a little bit. So, I mean, this is kind of a you, know, a you situation. What exactly do you need? Um, <clears throat> Damian Pierce, look. I've thought all along he'd have a better path to workload. I thought he'd I thought he'd get more usage. I just didn't expect as much with the usage. And I think he's a more dynamic player than they've had. But Matt Waldman and I talked about this from football guys and the rookie scouting portfolio. So that everyone's switching to go zone schemes. They might have been better off sticking with David Johnson, who does a great job as a as a gap runner, you know, uh, than than he did in the last offense. So maybe this is a situation where it'll come around, but the, the Titans or the Texans are not going to be a good offense. And I mentioned this earlier. I'll mention it again. They averaged 3.4 yards a carry. What did they average in this game? Probably just slightly under that between Burkhead and Pierce. They don't have a great offensive line. They're going to be playing from behind a lot. That's not to say we saw Rex Burkhead have like huge, huge rushing totals last year and playing from behind. And apparently Lovey Smith is fine playing for ties. So 
Maybe that works in their favor at some point. Just not, ex just not excited. I don't want to get rid of Damian Pierce. I just want to wait and see what develops. Standard scoring, says Kirk. Melvin Gordon versus Houston. Miles Sanders versus Minnesota. Damian Harris versus Pittsburgh. Or Jeff Wilson versus Seattle. I'm probably going to go Jeff Wilson, slight lean, but Melvin Gordon is also in the, or Miles Sanders is also in the conversation as well. I would still prefer Pierce to, I would as well, John. That's exactly correct, John. Uh, in case you're not reading the comments, John is saying exactly what I think. Uh, you know, the role is totally up in the air, and it's hard to know uh, if he was inactive totally due to special teams or if he's really the number three. I think that is the case. Pollard is my number four running back. Do I drop for D. Henderson? Sure, if it's your number four. I think you're going to have a clear path to workload and what eventually will be a better offense. Again, the Rams, another team with offensive line issues um, that may force them to run the ball more than they want to. Gage was a stash play. Yeah, then that's fine. Exactly. You know, I see what you're saying, David. So, so it, changing him for a different stash, totally a good move. What shirt are you looking at? And how are the cats? The shirt is this. Can we see that? It's an evolutionary thing. Um, and the, the cats are fine. One's outside. One's at the stairway staring at me. Uh, trying to avoid the dog. And the dog's not barking. Will the top dog wide receiver be in Washington? It'll be uh, it'll be Terry McLaurin. But Jahan Dotson, man, don't sleep on him. He looks really good. And Curtis Samuel as well. Scotty Boy, hey, Bob, pick two Ps, please. Half point PPR, James Robinson, Zeke, Jeff Wilson, Penny, thanks. So it sounds like Kenneth Walker will be back. I thought Penny looked great. Uh, wish he would have gotten more work. Jeff Wilson, I think, is going to get a lot of work. Zeke, I think, is going to get a lot of work. But the question is, will he have as hard of a run uh, – against the Bengals as he did against the Buccaneers. I don't know, James Robinson. So if I'm picking two, oh, wow. Oh, probably giving, I'm probably giving Zeke a chance. Look, if you don't want to, if you want to avoid this Cowboys offense altogether, I get it. I think Zeke will get plenty of volume and I think Penny will still be fine going against San Francisco. I'm, boy, you're putting me to the screws to me. Let me check one thing. Yeah, I'm sticking with Elliot. And then uh, Elliot and Wilson for me. That'd be the two. These are hard, hard decisions. People, stop that. Need two wide receivers to flex. Have Cortland, CD, McLaurin, and Penny. Playing Penny. Playing, you know, like CD. I mean, last, last, last. What was it against Minnesota? Cooper Rush had a really good game last year. And both CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper had like 100-yard games. CeeDee looked horrible. There's not a lot around him. I'm a little worried. Uh, I hate to tell people to bench CeeDee Lamb, though. Um, but I'm definitely starting Penny, uh, Sutton, and uh, boy, it's too early in the week for these questions. <laughs> Let me check some matchup. I'm going to go – I'm going to go yeah, – so – Early rankings have them ranked consecutively. And it's Lamb, McLaurin, and Sutton, 13, 14, and 15 on our first opinion cheat sheet. I'll go ahead and follow that. So I'm playing Lamb and Sutton. Uh, just a man, super tough call. Hey, I don't feel good about that one at all. Any concern with Rodgers against Chicago? I have faith with uh, an only backup is Lance, but some guys on waivers, Wentz and Tua. Like, I, I don't feel like I need to play Aaron Rodgers until I see it get better, but I do think it'll get better, and I think it'll get better, you know, whether or not Lazard plays, I just think, you know, we saw last year week one was horrible. Um, you know, we know he's the, he, he owns the Bears. He tends to own the Bears. He claims to own the Bears. I think it'll be a much better game for him. I probably would not dial him back on him myself. Uh, but I, I don't mind Lance. Lance gives you, you know, that rushing equity just didn't look good as, didn't look good as a passer. Maybe that was some of the weather. I'd like to see a little more. Uh, love Wentz and Tua both. Um, but don't know if I want to have them for the long haul. I'd probably go ahead and stick with Rodgers in this one. John Bonneville would set his would bet his house, Rodgers and I like the Bears, even as to, if he has to throw the ball to himself. He might have to. But what can we count on him from Michael Thomas against the Bucks? Like I think a pretty solid workload, right? Like we heard he was gonna go into this game last week with a with a uh, pitch count. If that was a pitch count, fine. He didn't show up till the second half, but the target share was good. I want to say 27%. I could be wrong, but it was really solid. And uh, I think he's the primary option. Uh, the concern is going to be the health of Jameis Winston. And uh, we'll see how that goes. That's something to watch a little bit. 
Um, but I think we can count on a pretty solid game, uh, uh, you know, heavily targeted, a good target share, 20 plus percent target share. And uh, if he can get some touchdowns, that'd be great as well. I think we need to ground downgrade CD to low end wide receiver two range without Dak. I want to say wide receiver two. I, I have him at the high end of wide receiver twos right now. Uh, but but you're not wrong. I mean, he's wide receiver two. It's okay, Beach Digger. It's, uh, it's that time of year. So the, the time of year is a bit of an issue here, right? Because we just don't have a lot to work on. I make the same old lame joke every time that that uh, September is the new August. We just don't see enough players. And you wonder if that isn't what hurt you know Russell Wilson a little bit or kept his receivers from getting off to a faster start, the fact that he wasn't didn't have any game action with him. And there's Geno Smith playing every damn preseason game looking like he knows what he's doing. I'm not saying, you know, like I, it's a conundrum. I get it for NFL teams. I mean, do you put a $250 million guy out there on the field for games that don't mean anything? I I understand the issues, but it leads to some volatility uh, for us as fantasy managers in the first month of the season. And, uh, you know, I talked to Sigma Bloom about this yesterday. Uh, go check out the couch if you didn't see it. And we talked, you know, I want to come up with a really super smart plan to overcome the volatility of week one, whether that is like, okay, play your studs. Well, you don't know who your studs are. So, you know, like I would assume the Cam Akers would be a stud going into this week. I would have assumed Allen Robinson would be one of my studs. I would not assume Daryl Henderson would be been one of my studs. So I think the, the key here is trying to be a little bit flexible with what you're doing and be open-minded to things. But that is a hard thing in fantasy. We put a lot of time and research in, and some of this is, you know, don't look at the narrow band of information. Look back at the broader band. Well, hell, if I do that with Alan Robinson, he hasn't been good for two years, right? So, I mean, you know, <laughs> this this month is going to be tough, and the goal is to come out with enough wins so that you're still in contention when things get dialed in and you figure them out. So not against being aggressive and making aggressive moves and, and ignoring who your studs are because I don't think we know, right? So... Uh, I just think it's a hard path to follow. Pick up Broncos D against Houston or Panthers D against New York Giants or keeps Pats D against Pittsburgh. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna stand pat with the Pats, but I wouldn't be against going with the Broncos. Colts are only rostering three running backs. Thoughts on rostering Deion Jackson in a deeper leagues in case JT goes down to an injury at some point. That's not a bad idea if you have that depth on your roster, Joe. Uh, you're a smart player. You knew that. <laughs> You set me up for success there. Thank you, sir. Uh, yoga. Ryan Haynes Yoga. Love the yoga. I did some today. It felt really good. Carter and Landry for Eli Moore and Iuk half point PPR. I'm assuming that's, is that Michael Carter? The heartbeat of the Jets offense? And Landry for Elijah Moore and Iuk? I don't know how long Michael Carter is going to remain the heartbeat of that offense. By the heartbeat, I mean the leading piece of that backfield. I mean, I think at some point that's going to flop. Uh, so I think over the course of time, I'd rather have Elijah Moore and I look. that's the side I'd want over time, but it's going to take some time for that to sort out Stevenson or Dobbins. If he plays Dobbins, if he plays, and I say that under the assumption that if Dobbins plays, they have the confidence that he can play. And also that they realize that Kenya Drake, Mike Davis as all are not the, uh, the answer there. And according to the, the observers at the practice field today, he looked really good in practice, moved really well, seemed to be trending in a good direction, you know, towards the end of camp anyway. So I'd probably play Dobbins if he's active. I don't know what the hell Stevenson's going to do any given – that Patriots offense is a, is a concern, right? That's the problem. You know, we've heard about it all summer long. This is not a narrow thing. Ty Montgomery's going to be gone. That works in his favor, I think. Pierre Strong, if that matters, is a little banged up too. But Ty Montgomery being out is going to be, a, you know, open the door to some more plays. And maybe that was the dilution that kept Stevenson from being more successful for us. So, uh, so I, I'm going to play Dobbins for sure. But I don't think you could. Uh, I don't think you should give up on Stevenson. Uh, no dropping. No dropping anyone after week one. Okay, you can drop people after week one. But will Mike Williams bounce back this week? I think he will. Um. I think he's a very good player who just, I mean, it was a weird game, right? Four targets for everybody. I don't think that's going to be the norm. Gino looking confident might be the most surprising thing of week one to me. He had some juice. I thought he would look confident. I think the juice is the surprising part. I kind of expected him to look competent. I mean, he's, you know, uh, I hadn't totally written him off and he didn't write me back. Um, but I'm with you. I thought he looked really good. And as good as he looked, 
Uh, I wish we had gotten more, you know, bigger plays or more downfield looks for DK Metcalf. Um, you know, uh, just such a limited band of production on his targets. Uh, but I do think, I do think Gino might be, uh, you know, the Seahawks kept saying all along, we're going to be better than you think. I think they're going to be better than we think. How do I feel about Robert Tunyon? He only played 36 points of snaps. That's funny. He was being eased in. I think he's, I think he's being eased in. And I do think it's promising. I think there's something to being one of the trusted, one of the few trusted targets, Zara, uh, for Aaron Rodgers. And there aren't a lot of them, right? There's the running backs. There's Lazard when he gets back, I think is a trusted target. We saw the end zone passes, the red zone passes to Lazard last year. He ranked highly in that. So I'm with you. And I think these other guys have yet to earn the trust. Sammy Watkins, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you know, Randall Cobb obviously has the trust, but Robert Tunyon certainly does. He's one of uh, Rogers' close friends off the field as well. So. Wow, that was horrifying. Apologies, everyone. My computer totally died. Wow. All right, let me get some let me get through some of these questions. That was like the blue screen of death. Computer died. Horrible death. Uh, let's see. Pick up where I left off. All right. Uh, what do you think? I okay. Tony is Tony is my number. Okay, okay. Pick two. Here we go. I'm caught up. Pick two from these half my wide receiver. Uh, Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, and Renfro. I probably play Julio, especially with uh, if Godwin's not playing. And I'd probably play Renfro over Cooper for right now. Hope he gets a few more targets this week. Doug forward. Tony is my number five receiver. Do I hold on longer or drop for Landry Shepard or Julio? I'd drop him for any of those right now. He just seems to be in the doghouse. He's an elite talent. Uh, they don't seem to be interested in using him. Richie Laura, what do you think I can get for Josh Jacobs and Chase Edmonds? What wide receiver do you think? Two, two for one? Two starting running backs in the NFL? I'd go for a wide receiver, a high-end high, high end wide, a low end wide receiver one. I mean, you're not going to get any of the top guys. Um, but I go, you know, in the Mike Evans range and and down. Probably not going to get A.J. Brown away from somebody. Find somebody who had a lousy game and pick on that person who you think is going to have a better game going forward. Everyone close the chat for a second and hit the like button to support Bob. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Hit the like button. I love the like button. 
Uh, appreciate you, Zara. Appreciate everyone coming, by the way. Sorry uh, for the crushing error of my computer. Uh, clap nuts. Trying to package person, trying to package Patterson and DK in a trade. What type of caliber player do you think you can get for him? Man? Well, coming off a big game for Patterson, I would go for a running back one level player or high end running back two. Uh, but Patterson might be that. Honestly, I think you'd get a, you know, I don't know if you get good value back for this. Uh, DK didn't have a great game, but I mean, I think you're selling. I would go for running back one level player and see what I could get in return. You know, Saquon. Probably not going to get him. I mean, anyone had a great game, it's going to be hard to get him. After week one, I'm dropping blankets no matter what you say. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I pick up a uh, young way coup. PC has returned, feeling much better about itself. It's really weird. I, I had an update. You know, the Windows likes to update, and I don't like it to update until I want it to. And so maybe that's maybe that was a screw up. Crazy. Uh, Moonfish needs one wide receiver, and one flex from these: uh, Ceh, Fournette, Marquise Brown, and A. Rob. Uh, if I knew for sure if Fournette was healthy, I would include him in this list, uh, but yeah, I'd give that a little time. Uh, so it's CEH and Marquise Brown for now. If Fournette's clear by the end of the week, it'd be Fournette. But play CEH Thursday night, wait and see on Fournette. Should I trade Dylan? He's on my bench, and I can probably get Juju. No, I'd keep Dylan. Any concerns about Patterson's role when healthy? Damon, Eric Romoff, I know that guy. Uh, no. I think, like... So, I mean, I guess maybe he would have had a slightly diminished role, but, I mean, 22 carries, it was a huge game. Remember, he's an older guy, but he has, doesn't have the kind of mileage on him that maybe some of the other players his age have. Certainly not a, the running miles on him. You know, so, he's return miles. So, so yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about Patterson at the moment. So, I think one of the reasons we got concerned about Patterson this summer was we just didn't see him. We'd heard some talk that he was going to play receiver more uh, and that we were going to see, you know, that – you know, maybe they had other plans. They bring in Tyler Algier, who is inactive, a healthy scratch for this game. So I think this the fact that we didn't see him, our mind blew up the worst possible outcome into the uh, into what it was. And it turns out Arthur Smith kind of had a similar role in mind. So I'm probably, I, I'm probably pretty confident in him at the moment. We'll see what uh, Damian Williams can do. Uh, I'd never trade Dylan right now. I wouldn't either. He's only going to get more and more shares. I agree with that. Ah, trade Aaron Jones. There you go. I don't want to trade him, but I'm getting offers left and right for him. Well, so there you go, Richie. That's the thing. If you're getting offers, gauge those offers against your need, you know, then maybe there is something. If he's not like your frontline guy or you have a couple other players that you feel like, uh, you know, you're playing ahead of him. So, so yeah, I mean, obviously there, there's a price for everybody, right? I'm not, but I'm not out there actively looking to trade Dylan away. But if I'm getting good offers and they're solid, yes, go ahead. What do I think about Terry McLaurin? I thought it was a slow week. I'm not going to panic over that. But I do think there are more weapons there now than there have been in the past, including Jahan Dotson, man. That guy looks smooth. Um, you know, the two touchdowns aside, just everything we've heard about him uh, professes smoothness. And it wasn't a great game for McLaurin uh, until he had the touchdown. So I get that. And Curtis Samuel is going to be a factor there as well. But I think, I think Terry McLaurin's talent is going to win out over the course of the season. Larry K is the only player I have on more important team. <laughs> I'm thinking about trading for Terry. Uh, trading Dylan for Terry? Terry and somebody else. Yeah, hard to tell you with Wentz. I agree with that. What do you think of Zamir White? I think he's going to take some time. I, you know, I think it might take an injury for him to get a significant role. I don't know. We may have been, we may have over worried the, the whole thing. There were two theories that we've had on Josh Jacobs, right? This is going to be a total New England, but, you know, backfield situation for every week it's going to be a different play and maybe that's how it ends up but right now it looks to me more like it's going to be uh run the wheels off him or at least for, you know turn him in up to the after this year that's what it seems again one week we don't have a lot of information that's the problem problem with all these decisions and again, week one, always the most volatile, you know, the first month, the most volatile week. And we've been loaded, jam packed with weirdness. Uh, no mistake, uh, you know, the weirdness is there. I thought Jacobs, 10 carries, you know, didn't see anyone else getting substantial carries. They just passed the ball a lot. I'm guessing when they run the ball a lot, he's going to be the guy running the ball just based on what we know.
I think, I think he's, I think, I think that's what white is right now is a handcuff. Uh, John Bonneville suggesting that. And I think, I think for right now, that's the case. You know, well, look, we see Josh Jacobs get beat up. So maybe at some point that, you know, you'll want to cash that chip in. Uh, and uh, it looks like the Amir Abdullah should have failed too. And they're, they're just going with what they know and Brandon Bolton. With uh, GB's wide receiver depth, do you think Lazard will eventually be the guy to hang on to? I think so. Uh, if Kirk is on waivers, pick him up. He's going to be busy. They paid him to be busy. We saw him busy in the first game, 12 targets. You know, Isaiah Jones do a little something. Maybe Marvin Jones has some weeks. But overall, uh, Christian Kirk is a the guy they want to have that lead role. This is going to be on Trevor Lawrence to pick up play. He's got to play better. He's got to play better. My computer's got to be better. I'm afraid to open my uh, my work file to see what I missed, what I lost. Did I save everything? Do you ever think about that? Like, did I forget to save everything? Ah! Richie Laura, I want to trade Jacobs, Evans, and A-Rob for Trey Lance and McLaurin. Sure. That's If you have a thing for Trey Lance. I don't, but I don't, you know, like, and I'm not keen on trading for quarterbacks, but, you know, that's not the worst trade. I'm guessing you have running backs that you feel more comfortable with. So, sure. Hypothetically, Winston gets hurt in case and becomes a quarterback, but he's listed as tight end. How do you think that would work out in the league? If he's listed as a tight end, you're going to have a really, you know, you're going to have people in your league throwing a fifth, but if you're on a platform where they can't change him, there will be platforms that you It's going to be a mess. Hypothetically, though, I don't think it will happen. I think, they're, I, think they're, I think Andy Dalton looked good enough this summer that they'll stick with him if something happens. That's my guess. You know, there was some, there were, there were a few preseason games where, you know, there was talk like, wow, maybe Andy Dalton is better suited for this offense than Jameis Winston. I think they'd go with that. I think they'd go with that. All right, got a few more minutes here before my computer crashes again. If you have some more questions, throw them at me. In the meantime, I'll remind you, footballdiehards.com is a news tool, so I think you need to have a successful fantasy football season. Yeah, so edge on the competition. I'll be here every Wednesday, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be here every Saturday at noon Eastern time, as I have been most of the last season. Uh, we'll have other stuff to our DM lineup show, 9 p.m. on Saturday night. Jamie and Eric. You saw Eric in here a little while ago, Eric Romoff. And great job there. You can listen to me on Sirius Tech Fantasy Sports Radio, uh, Monday nights, Thursday nights, Friday nights, 10 p.m. Go from 1 a.m. in the morning on Monday and Thursday until midnight on Friday. You can catch Saturday night. Three hours also on Saturday night. It's on NFL radio, but also simulcast on the Fantasy Channel, 8 to 11 Eastern time. Uh, and again, on Sunday morning, you can do hear me and Jeff Mans on the free game show. Tons of stuff on the site on Sunday morning as well um, <clears throat> that you can take advantage of, including all the latest and active information, all the stuff you need to know. 513 rookie standard starting mixing in CEH. Penny or Najee? Uh, Najee, or Penny right now, because he's healthy. And we'll see what Najee does. I mean, if full clearance for Najee, even then I'm going to be a little concerned about, you know, just how that offense looked against the Bengals. Are they going to look better this week? I'd like to maybe see it. If I had these options available to me, maybe some of that depends on if Kenneth Walker is available. If, you know, if it's going to be Walker and Penny chopping it up, maybe the nice put it back to Najee if he's available. No sleep for me. I'm sleeping very little. And uh, not at all when my computer crashes. That's horribly frightening. No sleep till Brooklyn. I see you, Beastie Boy Joe. All right, everybody. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go see if my files got destroyed or if I saved everything like a diligent worker would. Don't you hate that? for fantasy with Jason Hill. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Uh, thanks for coming, Pat. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, you know, I love doing this as well. We're going to change this format up over the course of the season. We've got some big plans for trying to work them out. Some of this is just ramping up the start of the season. It's always a bit of a battle, right? We've just got to get into the groove, got to find my uh, find my lanes and find my times and find how things work. So we're getting there. Uh, if you've been around with football diehards before, you know we always pick up the pace over the course of the season. We start with a high baseline, put a lot of effort into it, and then we add to it. That's what we're all about. Make a process, make it better. Same thing you should do with your fantasy team. Mark Slaymaker. Have Higgins, Mike Williams, Lamb, but also Hollywood Brown, three starters. Uh, this decision might get made for you, T. Higgins with the concussion. Um, but if he's playing, it's a pretty hard call with, uh, you know, Lamb and Brown. 
I'm probably going Lamb at this point. And again, I'm hanging my hat on the big game for uh, Cooper Rush last year against Minnesota, where he threw for like 300 some yards. And uh, both Cooper and Lamb did fare really well. The concern for me with Lamb is just like he's it, right? I mean, between Noah Brown and Rico and Houston and all these nobody just tough. Is fantasy football is fantasy diehards hiring? I don't know. You always send email an email. You're welcome, email. Uh, appreciate you, John. I really enjoy you coming and uh, chatting and topping it up a little bit. Appreciate everyone for coming. I'll always have a great time here. The community's great. And hopefully we'll build this up. DJ Mack, two start two. Um, Ellen Gordon, Stevenson, and Dylan. I'm going to start Dylan and probably Stevenson in this one. Um, not against Melvin Gordon. I think, you know, he and Stevenson are kind of at that same level, right? Let me just get the second opinion rankings today. Uh, just to double check that. Uh, he ranks them consecutively in the initial cheat sheet, 36 for Gordon and 37 for Stevenson. So play the one you like better. He likes Gordon better. I like Stevenson better. Or two, should I drop Wondale Robinson for? Mm. Wondale Robinson is hurt. I don't know. You know, I'd probably hang on to him a little bit. They seem to like him a lot better than they like the Kadarius Tony. Email at footballdiehards.com is the email. Uh, thanks for the time. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you coming. Uh, I've been doing fantasy for 25 years now. Nice uh, nice background. Should I drop Wondale Robinson for Kyle Phillips at a PPR? I might do that. I mean, clearly, you know, Clearly, Robinson is a guy they they have they've had some plans for, right? They've had plans for him all along. They like him. He's playing ahead of Kadarius Tony right now, but the injury is a little concerned. This week. Um, but I do like Kyle Phillips an awful lot, and I might do that. All right, kids. I will see you Saturday. Uh, check into the Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio if you listen. I'll be there Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night and Sunday. So many days ahead. And hit the FootballDieHards.com website. Uh, you'll love it. Uh, if you like this program, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. We'll be doing more and more and more as the season goes on. And come back Saturday. I'll be here come back Saturday night for Jimmy and Eric. And we'll see you then.